Okay, so in today's math lesson, what we started doing was ordering and comparing rational numbers. Uh, when we're ordering and comparing rational numbers, a number line is certainly something that we're going to need to utilize. Uh, and there are certain understandings we need to um, get in our head a bit when we're talking about rational numbers and we're ordering them and comparing them. Uh, one thing we need to understand that is that the further a number uh, travels away from zero on the right side, the greater that value is. Now the opposite is true on the left side of zero. The further we get away from zero on the left side, the smaller the value gets. Okay. Now holistically, I suppose if we're going to ignore zero entirely, the more we travel to the right, the greater the value. The more we travel to the left on the entire number line, the smaller the value. But we're focusing everything in relation to zero. Zero is our sort of the center of our mathematical universe here. Okay. So we're going to uh, compare everything to zero. So again, everything, the further we get, further we travel away from zero on the right side of zero, the greater the value. And the further we travel away from zero on the left side of zero, the lower the value. Okay? So keeping all of that in mind, let's take a look at the first example here. Okay, so let me get rid of all this here. I'll just clear the screen. We'll wind up making a new one in a second, but let's take a look at these guys here. We have three jobs. We need to order these two fractions, these rational numbers, uh, from least to greatest. We need to find the opposites, and then we need to order the opposites from least to greatest. So let's start with a number line. And it looks like my interval, my smallest interval here is quarters. So I'm going to, uh, uh, let's see, take that into consideration. I need nothing greater than one whole. I need nothing greater than negative one whole. So I need to plot my one quarter. So my one quarter is going to be somewhere in this land over here between zero and one because it is a positive integer to the right side, excuse me, positive rational number to the right side of zero, but less than one whole. So I'm going to split this into four parts. There they are. One quarter happens to be right here. I'm going to plot that. Okay. And on the other side, I'm going to make quarters as well. Now, if I'm going to run that opposite right here, I could do that right now, because the opposite means the same distance from zero, but on the other side of zero. So right here is the negative one quarter. So here's my negative one quarter. Okay. So I'm on my way. Now I need to plot that negative one half. That guy's right here. Negative one half, because negative one half is the same as negative two quarters. Okay. But in this sense, I'm just keeping it as negative one half. So I'll put this guy right here. Now I need the same distance from zero on the other side, which is right here. So here's my positive one half. So my opposites are done. So the opposite of negative one half is positive one half. And I proved it on my number line. Now I need to order from least to greatest. Now, once again, the further away from zero I get to the left of zero, Again, the further away from zero I am on the left side of zero, the smaller the value. That one half is right here, or that negative, excuse me, negative one half is the furthest left of zero. Okay, well, actually, you know what? Let me get rid of this whole thing because my opposites are going to mess me up. And I don't want that. Let me just make a new one so we can see just those two rational numbers. So here's my zero, my my one quarter is here, my negative one half is here, and now I can see what I'm talking about here. Anything furthest away left of zero is going to be smaller, anything furthest away from zero on the right side of zero is going to be greater. So my negative one half comes first and then my one quarter. Okay. Now we need to talk about those opposites. So what I'm going to do is, yep, you guessed it, make another number line. And there's my zero, there's my one, there's my negative one. And I'm going to plot that negative one quarter. Here's that negative one quarter. And that one half is over here. And here we go. So the least, the smallest value, is going to be the one furthest away from zero on the left side. And so that's that negative one quarter. And the greater value is going to be the furthest one away from zero on the right side. And there you have it. Okay? 
So that's the deal with that. And then the next lesson, which I'll do right now because it's very similar. That was lesson seven. We'll cruise on down to lesson eight. And lesson eight is just more practice of the same thing. Okay, except that we're using a little more complex values here. So I have a negative 1.75 and I have a negative 3.25. And there's my number line. And everything is just left of, this, uh, left of zero now. So that complicates things a little bit, um, or it simplifies it because I don't have to think of the right side of zero at all. So everything f the furthest, so anything really far away from zero on the left side is going to be small. In fact, the smallest value is going to be the one that's furthest left of zero on the left side of zero. Okay? So where, where do these lie? Well, 1.75, if I just put in my whole numbers here, here's my 1, here's my 2, here's my 3. Oh, and I should put a 4. My 1.75 is going to be in here somewhere. My 3.25 is going to be somewhere in here. Excuse me, my negative 3.25 and my negative 1.75 are going to be in here. So here's my negative 1.75. Here's my negative... 3.25, and I'm just estimating where they are. I know this is going to be somewhere in between these whole numbers, and I know this guy is going to be in between 3 and 4 as far as whole. No, oh, these are negative, sorry. Got to put those negative symbols in. And there you have it. Okay, so I know which one is the smallest. Well, they want greatest to least on this. All right, greatest to least. Well, the greatest value is going to be the one that's closer to 0 on the left side of 0. So this one is the greatest. So negative 1.75 uh, is the greatest, and the smallest value is the one that's furthest away from 0 on the left side, negative 3.25, okay? And then in column 3, farthest right on the number line, well, farthest right on the number line, there we go, and the farthest left on the number line would be this guy, okay? The number lines very much help, so I suggest if you were ever confused about these things, Make sure you're drawing one out. Now, if we didn't draw a number line and we wanted to work one out, let's try this one right here. I know that negative uh, 9.7 is going to be further away from 0 on the left side. Therefore, it's a smaller value. Negative 9 is going to be to the left of 0, but not as far away as negative 9.7. Therefore, negative 9 is the greater value because it's actually closer to 0 on the left side and not that far away, or as far away as negative 9.7. Farthest right on the number line is going to be that negative 9. It's going to be closer to 0. All right, And remember, I'm using everything in relation to 0. As opposed to the negative 9.7 is going to be furthest away from 0 on the left side of 0. Okay? So that's the deal, folks. All right? Thanks so much. Take care. Bye-bye.